Hey guys, good day, afternoon, night, wherever it may be where you are. I'm Dark Matter Technology, and before I go on with anything else, let me apologize in case the mic quality sounds really, really bad and makes your ears bleed. I don't know what's causing it at the moment, if that's the case, but I'm sorry if that's how you feel about it. But before I ramble on about anything else, let me get to the purpose of this video, which is the Portal X99 build guide. So let's talk for a moment about like the rationale of how or why this idea came into place, or what makes this idea come into place. So, the current competitor to an idea like this would be laptops. Laptops now are becoming so powerful, they're about to start featuring NVIDIA's new 1000 series graphics cards in it. And just recently, they put in a full GTX 980 into it, which is still one of the most powerful cards to date. So it makes you wonder, why would I need a portable computer if I have this beast of a laptop that can just pretty much run everything I need? And as a matter of fact, I'm recording this video or making this video off of my laptop. So again, it begs the question, why would I need a portable desktop if I could just use my laptop? Without going to some of the more obvious reasons, just sticking with this one, in some cases you may prefer a computer or desktop rig, whatever you want to call it, that has a multi-core processor, that has a, f a standard graphics card, 64 gigabytes of RAM. It could, it all depends, even though the laptops can support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, so I digress. But still, some things you might just prefer to have on your own rig or have on your own separate computer. So, with that being said, I'll bring this into perspective. You really want to have, let's say, a laptop or right, some, a device that's portable with you that you can take between work, travel, etc. So, you could buy a laptop, but that's not powerful enough, or it might not just be powerful enough to where you want it to be. This is where this build comes in. With a multi-core processor, dedicated graphics card that's pr almost at the top of the spectrum right now, in a por case with a portable um, design and a handle on it, it could make for a better alternative, or a decent alternative, to having a laptop. Not to say that laptops are bad by any means, of course, but sometimes other solutions might just work better. And this solution wouldn't even apply to everyone, because most people are probably going to tell me that I'm an idiot for making this, and that laptops are better overall. Point made. So, with that being said, let me get into the pro um, processor. The processor we'd be using in this build would be the Intel Core i7-5820K 6-core processor. Like I said, it's a 6-core processor with 12 threads. It supports hyper-threading and has an operating frequency or base clock at 3.3 GHz. It runs on the LGA 2011-3 socket, which again, X99. So this processor is pretty much a beast all around. It's towards the higher end of i7 processors being on the enthusiast line. The consumer line consists of processors like the i7-4790K, 6700K, or if you want to step down to i5s, 4670K, 4690K, or 6600K if you're talking about Skylake. So with this processor, the main thing that differentiates it, differentiates it from all the others is just like I said at the beginning, was a 6-core processor. There are other processors from Intel that support more cores, like the new 6950X that has a total of 10 cores but costs $1700 or around that area, so if you need that, that's up to you, but $1700 for a processor, I don't think a lot of people will be willing to spend that. But anyways, this is a processor, it can handle all your consecration needs, gaming, professional usage, etc. It's just awesome. So now I'm gonna talk about the motherboard, and this is actually the only. Like, the, this is pretty much where this build kind of comes together. At least one half of the part that makes the build come together. So the motherboard we'd be using is the ASRock XI9E-ITX-AC Mini motherboard. So it's a Mini ITX motherboard, and the thing that makes it special, well, actually, it's a few things that make it special. First one being is that it's the only XI9ITX Mini ITX motherboard on that platform. So there's literally no other Mini ITX XI9 LJ2011-3 motherboard in the world at the moment. Hopefully there'll be more, but at the moment this is the only one. Some other things that make it special is that it only has two RAM slots. So like your typical XI9 boards, you'd have eight. This one only has two, which means that you're only gonna be running RAM in dual channel mode, which isn't a bad thing, but it just means you won't be taking advantage of normal full-fledged features of X99. But other than that, because of its own server grade cooler. I'll try to find the, the actual version or brand of it and link it in the description, 
Um, it has its own Wi-Fi adapter and pretty much everything else makes it just a typical motherboard. It's just that's a really small form factor and kind of tight when it comes down to it. But everything else is perfectly fine about this motherboard and it's actually pretty interesting looking at a really small X99 motherboard and knowing that you could fit up to like a 10 core processor in this. I just think the concept is pretty cool. So next with the memory, if you have a certain need for a certain memory kit you want to use, that's fine. Just make sure it's, you're only picking out two sticks of it or running it in dual channel mode. But the memory we'd be going with in this build that I picked out earlier was the Kingston Savage DDR4 2400 MHz kit. So memory is memory and it's pretty much all the same unless you're referring to speeds and CAS latencies, key spare designs, etc. So the special thing about this memory is that it runs at a CAS latency of 12, which should make it faster overall, but you won't really see this actual speed difference in real world applications. So it's just food for thought. So if you have a certain kit of RAM you want to use, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure it fits within the physical dimensions of the case, that it won't cut off heat. The CPU cooler, heat spreaders, it won't conflict with anything. Because cable management here is extremely important in a mini ITX case, which brings me to the next point, the case. The case we'll be using is a Silverstone ML08B-H ATPC case. So this is the other half of the part that makes the build come together. The first one was the CPU, this one's the case. So with the case, the coolest thing about it is that it has a handle on top of it. So this is where, how I mentioned, it, it can be very portable. Instead of you throwing this in a backpack or something, or a case, you could potentially carry this with you wherever you go. It does sound a little weird carrying around a computer in your hands like a briefcase, but I think it's the cooler thing about it. It's unorthodox, so you don't really see many people doing it, and I just think that's kind of cool actually. But other than that, it's a mini ITX case similar to the ML08B case, which is actually pretty much the same thing just without a handle. But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So it has a minimalistic look, so it'll be probably a lot more aesthetically appealing in a business environment. For storage, we'll be using two one terabyte SSDs, and there's a little bit of a variety here actually with storage. So in the case, you can fit up to four storage devices, being three either 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs, or one 3.5 inch hard drive, given that your graphics card is short enough or small enough, depending on how you look at it. So, it doesn't matter what brand of SSD you get, I just think that two one terabyte SSDs will work or two 960 gig SSDs will be best because in this build, I don't think you really want to be taking things apart again or opening up the case to doing maintenance on it unless you absolutely have to because it'd be really a bit of a hassle to get rid of all that cable management and redo it again, especially if you use zip ties because then you gotta cut them, put them back together and it's probably just gonna be a really long day and really something you don't want to deal with. So I think two one terabyte SSDs would be good so that because you have a lot of space for mass storage and it's going to be fast enough if you do want that extra storage though you could stick in another ssd or 3.5 inch hard drive which i'll explain with the graphics card because they actually kind of correspond with each other bringing me to the graphics card there are two options you could potentially use the latter is going to be the better of the two even though both of them i think would be perfectly fine so the first one would be the amd r9 nano or radion nano that came out a little while ago and the latter of it is a new Gigabyte GTX 1070 mini card that I believe either just came out or is going to be released in the near future. So, both of these cards, the thing that makes them cool or special is that they come in a really small form factor. So, where you mount the GPU in this case, there's going to be some room left over for you to mount a 3.5 inch hard drive or an SSD, which is what I was referring to about how you can mount that extra storage in there. So, between the two cards, like I mentioned, the latter is better being GTX 1070. It will overall perform better than the R9 Nano, and more than likely won't thermal throttle, which is one of the problems found with the R9 Nano. Don't get me wrong, the R9 Nano is a great card, especially for being one of the first to have a small form factor like that and pack as much power as GTX 980 in it. But some things on it were just kind of flawed, like the again thermal throttling but other than that it was still a great card but at the moment since gtx 1070 mini is coming out that is more than likely going to be the better card and lastly for the power supply power supply we'll be going with is corsair sf 600 watt 80 plus gold certified fully modular sfx power supply so this power supply if you don't like corsair you could get a silver cell model which is pretty much the same thing or i believe there's actually 700 watt premium, excuse me, cert, platinum cert, certified model, 
the Silver Sun make as well, that's fully modular, but just with this, 600 watts and 80 plus gold, fully modular will be perfectly fine. Actually, it'll be more to our benefit for this anyways. So, to our benefit in that regard, because the fully modular cable management will allow us to only pick what cables we need, meaning that cable management will be a whole lot easier instead of having it to go through all that cable management, all these wires and stuff with a normal power supply that's not modular. Because there's not that much kill management room in here, so kill management is extremely, extremely important. You don't want to block off anything, you don't want to cut anything, and then if you, can't, if you don't do it right, you might not be able to close side panels on your case. So, kill management, again, very important. Keep that in mind. So, before I end, a couple things I want to touch on real quick. For one, who is this for again? It's for people that want something that's portable, but has more power, more power than a laptop. If you don't want to carry around, say, 5 pounds or more of weight, or just have a typical laptop that you can open up anywhere, do that. This build is not for everyone. In fact, sometimes I even question this build itself. So keep that in mind. Next thing, peripherals. You won't be carrying around a monitor everywhere you go, unless you're land partying, of course, something like to that extent, in which case, you reserve all rights. But peripherals in this case typically won't be carrying a monitor but for keyboard and mouse try to find something wireless or very small and compact for keyboards maybe wireless mechanical keyboard or just a small wireless keyboard if you can for mice it's a, a really easier ground game because there are a lot of different mice out there especially wireless ones now I personally like Logitech mice a lot right now I'm using the MX Masters mouse um, they came out with their G900 mouse a little while ago that's Oh, no wireless gaming mouse that's RGB so I think that's pretty cool or good option but your mouse may vary everyone has different tastes so go out there and just pick out what's right for you so I think I'm done with everything I had to say so like this video if you like it subscribe dislike if you dislike and tell me what I can do to improve if you think it's just flat out terrible and I should GTFO please say so just be respectful about it in the comments anyways that's it and hope you guys have a great day or night depending on where you are